Hi YouTube, this is Linnaeus and today I'll be showing you how to replace the cells in an old 18 volt Ryobi OnePlus battery pack. Here I have a faulty 1.5 amp hour battery which hopefully has a working BMS. I'll be replacing the cells with some salvaged 18650 batteries which have been capacity tested to be approximately 1700 milliamp hours each. By the end of this process I should end up with a 1.7 amp hour battery pack. You could use 2500 milliamp hour cells or 3000 milliamp hour cells and have a higher capacity battery. Just make sure the cells are rated for 20 amps or more continuous discharge current and always get them from a reputable seller. I personally recommend the Samsung INR18650 25Rs, I'm using the 20Rs in this case which are just a lower capacity version, or you can use the LG HE2s. These two batteries are commonly used in OEM power tool batteries. So let's get started with what you'll need for this project. You'll need an old non-functioning Ryobi 18 volt battery with a working BMS. You'll need the replacement 18650 batteries, in this case we'll be needing 5, but for the 4 or 5 amp hour battery packs you'd be needing 10 of those. You'll need a size 10 Torx security bit and a screwdriver. You'll need a small flathead screwdriver, a small Phillips head screwdriver, soldering iron, solder wire, spot welder, pure nickel strips with sufficient current capacity, a multimeter, some pliers, wire cutters and scissors. In terms of safety, I recommend wearing gloves, safety glasses and working in a well ventilated area, especially when you're soldering. So let's take this battery apart. First up, you'll need to unscrew the 5 Torx security bits with a screwdriver. One of these screws in the corner has a silicon cap over it which will need to be pried off with the flathead screwdriver or something sharp. Once the screws are off, pull on the battery connector gently to create a gap. Get a firm grip over the top and bottom of the enclosure and keep pulling carefully until it separates. Make sure you don't drop the bottom part or any other part of this battery as it houses the old cells and we aim to preserve the BMS and all of the electronics. The rubber pieces on the side should be loose. At this stage you can measure the voltages of the old batteries as that will provide a good indication of what went wrong. A single dead battery is all that's needed for the whole battery pack to fail as these are connected in series. Discard any batteries under 3 volts just to be safe and keep the rest for a future project. You now have the option of desoldering these red balance wires or cutting them off at the nickel strips. Either way, you'll have to reconnect these onto the new cells so try not to damage the wires. Make sure you don't short anything out throughout this process. With the balance wires removed, I will now dislodge the existing spot welds. This can be done most easily with a flathead screwdriver as the copper strips, which I suspect Ryobi has been using, tear apart quite easily when you pry. Now with all the spot welds removed, you can unscrew the four Phillips head screws securing the BMS to the battery assembly. The BMS should now come loose. At this stage, I recommend labeling the positive and negative terminals on both the BMS and the battery assembly. Now we have to remove the two Torx 10 screws which can be hard to reach. With the screws now removed, the white plastic pieces can be pulled apart with a bit of force. I would discard the bad batteries and keep the good ones aside. Now is the step to make sure the new batteries are as closely matched as possible. This means that they're the same brand and model, that they have voltages as close as possible to one another, you can measure this with a multimeter, and their capacity is as close as possible. You can test this with a capacity tester, but I bought my batteries pre-tested. Now place the batteries in the holder in the appropriate configuration, ensuring positive and negative at each end corresponds to the previously labelled battery holder. Now spot weld your nickel strips onto the positive and negative end of the batteries at either end. Bend this strip over the edge for connection to the BMS later. Now do the series connections alternating between positive and negative terminals. Now think about how you want to connect the balance wires. I will spot weld a small tab to each potential, so at 4.2 volts, 8.4 volts, 12.6 volts and 16.8 volts. It's up to you if you'd like to spot weld these connections or solder. I'm going to go with solder. I'll place the BMS on the battery assembly and screw it in place. Now I'll connect the tinned pieces together with the soldering iron. I will now spot weld the positive and negative terminals. A good test at this point is to measure the voltages with your multimeter or you can simply click the charge level indicator button. If the lights turn on, we're all good. If they don't turn on, however, we'll have to backtrack and see where we went wrong. 
If we're all good, now we simply put everything back together again. I recommend reversing the steps we took to disassemble the battery. So place the batteries in the bottom, ensuring the heatsink is in this little room. Place the rubber pieces and metal spring tabs back on. Place the top part onto the assembly. Test this inner tool. Now that we're all good, we can screw it back together. You can test the battery in a charger. And we're all done.